All right, Israel's up here. Another game of domination on the map. Mission for you guys, and uh, I'm going to be using the Bard 50 cal. And as you probably already seen by the title, I end up getting a fair amount of kills with this thing. Um, granted, I don't get all of my kills with my sniper rifle, but I get most of them. Like, I mean, one or two kills. Yeah, I get a hit marker and a guy, and I finish him up with the Desert Eagle. I know some people are going to be really pedantic and say, "Oh, you didn't really get 49 kills for your sniper rifle." But I got most of them with it, and, you know, there's no kill streaks in this because it's bare bones. I should probably mention that now. It's bare bones. No one has any kill streaks, but neither do I. So, you know, most of my kill. Well, actually, all of my kills are going to be with my gun or my character or my grenades or s equipment or whatever. So, you know, most of them are going to be with the bars, uh, and usually the ones that aren't are going to be with the Desert Eagle, which I have as my secondary, and I, that's not exactly easy to get kills with either. You know, granted, I do hate it when people say, like, uh, you know, oh, 50 kills sniper gameplay, and then they get, like, maybe 10 or so kills with the actual sniper rifle, um, get the rest with their kill streak, and then for most of the game, just run around with, uh, like, the MP9 or something, and just rely on that for the whole game. Like, obviously, that's frustrating, but, you know, in this, like, I'm, you can see, I'm getting most of my kills with my, with my sniper, so you can't complain too much. But anyway, I'm, I, I've really gone off topic here. I've gone on a huge tangent, and I might as well get into what I actually want to talk about. And seeing as Black Ops 2 is literally around the corner, and by around the corner, I mean it's coming out tomorrow, and I cannot wait. It's going to be awesome. Well, hopefully, anyway. Seeing as Black Ops 2 is out tomorrow, I wanted to just kind of have one final look back at Modern Warfare 3, and just kind of, you know... Have a look at what this game did right, what it did wrong, and uh, just kind of give it like one final review. Coming into Modern Warfare 3, I was just kind of expecting this to pretty much be Modern Warfare 2 without Woman Army New Tubes. I.e., you know, really fast paced gameplay, you know, more fast paced than Black Ops had been, but I was hoping that it would basically just have the fast paced action of Modern Warfare 2 with the good hit detection of Modern Warfare 2. Obviously, I didn't want the hit detection of Black Ops because the Black Ops hit detection could be a bit dodgy at times, and um, so I was hoping for that. And while we did get fast paced action and somewhat good hit detection, at, at times this game was just far too hectic. And I think that just comes down to the map design. The map design, in my opinion, wasn't that good in this game. Uh, I felt it was not necessarily poor, but I felt it didn't do much to encourage objective play, which I'll definitely go into more later on in this commentary. Uh, the spawn systems definitely didn't help. Uh, it, whether it, that was a part of bad map design or whether it was just whatever way they coded the spawn system just was really poor. Uh, the spawns in this game were just retarded, I think we can all agree. And, you know, it was really frustrating to deal with because uh, so many times you would turn around the corner and the entire enemy team would just spawn there when you wouldn't expect them to spawn there as well. So it became really hard to predict where enemies were going to be coming from at times. And it was hard to get spawn traps going because it was really easy for the spawns to flip or sometimes you'd expect the spawns to flip and they wouldn't. So, I don't know, the spawn system was just really inconsistent and, you know, really annoying at times. Uh, while this game did have its issues, it did do some good things. Like, the one good thing, one thing that I really liked about this game was uh, the strike packages. I really liked the idea that depending on what class setup you're using, you could change your kill streaks. I like that. Also, uh, guys, take note here, I get probably one of the best clips I've ever gotten in Modern Warfare 3. Just there, I managed to hit a quad feed. And if I didn't get a hit marker on that guy, I might have gotten the rolling quad feed. Uh, you know, it's a shame, but I mean, you know, I'm happy with a quad feed anyway, any day. And that is probably the only quad feed I've ever gotten in Modern Warfare 3. But then again, you know, I'm not much of a montage maker myself. And I just really wanted to hit one clean quad feed with a sniper rifle by the end of Modern Warfare 3. Which I managed to do. So, obviously, I was really happy with this. So, um, yeah. Anyway, back to what I was talking about. You know, back to the topic of Modern Warfare 3 in general. Specialist strike package in this game, I felt was a really good idea. The idea that you could, you know, instead of using kill streaks, that you could just run around and get more and more perks and then eventually get all the perks in the game. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I think everyone can agree that was a really good idea and it was a really awesome feature of the game. Assault Strike Package was, you know, so-so. Had some solid kill streaks in there, although at times they were a little... It was quite easy to shoot them down. They got shot down a lot. The Specialist Strike Package, I felt, was actually a good idea, but they really shouldn't have put lethal kill streaks there, in there. I felt the support strike package should just be strictly non-lethal. Unfortunately, they put things like stealth bombers in there, and obviously, you know, stealth bombers were ridiculously annoying, and they were really easy to get. It was a good concept, but they they kind of ruined it there. 
But I did like the whole concept of point streaks as well. I felt the idea of point streaks was definitely a step in the right direction. But I didn't think it was enough to encourage objective play in objective game modes. I can understand maybe getting one point for jumping on a flag at the very start of the game. But I mean, jumping on a highly contested B flag sh should be worth more than one point. Seeing as you can get one point just by killing one person. I mean, you're you, to be honest, you're much better off just sticking to the edges of the map and uh, not dying and keeping your kill streak going. And you'll probably end up getting more points as a result of that than you would ever uh, jumping on flags. So in that regard, it was a good idea, but it just lacked the execution. Like it didn't have the proper execution behind it. The other thing that I felt they did pretty good, face off. Like I, I quite like that, you know, I didn't play too much of it, uh, but it was a nice idea. The fact that you could go in and you could play 1v1s. Uh, I found 1v1s a little boring to be honest, but you know, 2v2s and 3v3s is where I mostly played in face off and you know, those were fun and I really did like that idea. You know, you could go in with a small party, uh, if it was only like one or two guys with you, then you could go in, you could be the entire team and you could play against other guys. So I, I, I like the idea of face off. That was pretty cool and I hope it comes back in Black Ops. I actually haven't heard about that, so I don't know whether or not it does. And the community playlist I thought was a really good idea. The idea that you could just have a playlist full of game types that weren't as serious as, you know, the usual game types that we're all used to, such as Domination, Team Deathmatch. I would say Kill Confirm, but that was new to Modern Warfare 3. But you know, like Free For All, Search and Destroy, that sort of thing. You know, the super, you know, the serious game types where everyone's trying to do well. It was a completely different atmosphere when you were playing something like Infected or All or Nothing or um, well, I would say Drop Zone, but Drop Zone got tri quite tryhardy because that game just became infested with snipers and people going for montage clips. Like, I myself, you know, I did dabble in it a little bit trying to get montage clips, but for the most part, I just ended up playing Domination because I found that game type way too hectic. And if I thought the spawns were bad in, like, Domination and that, it was, they were even worse in Drop Zone. It was just crazy at times. Overall, it was fun, but I felt they didn't quite... I felt they didn't quite reach the potential that the community playlist had. Like they could, I felt they should have brought out new game types like every month or so, and that would have been awesome. I mean, they they had so many ideas for playlists or for game types. People were suggesting some really cool game types. It's not that they didn't have any ideas; it's just that it didn't put them into practice, uh, which was kind of disappointing. But you know, the game types that we did get were quite good, in fairness, and they were a lot of fun. So I can't complain too much, but I felt they could have done a little bit more in terms of the community playlist. Um, death streaks in this game were really annoying. Final Stand and Martyrdom were annoying enough, but did you really need to put Dead Man's hand in this? I mean, that was just ridiculous. It was basically like giving someone uh, a small Moab just for dying repeatedly. Like, <laughs> I think it was just ridiculous. Uh, it had such a huge blast radius and all, and it was if you were anywhere within that blast radius, you just died instantly. I thought it was just a horrible idea. Uh, to be honest, I felt they shouldn't have brought killstreaks back at all, but like Deadman Hand just really took the piss in my opinion. Weapon balance is uh, quite a controversial issue in this game because weapon balance is unusual in this game because there's not one gun that you can definitively say is like the OP god gun. Like, you, what would be the best gun in the game? You, you know, if you ask anyone, you'll get different people saying different guns. The, the truth is, they had a few guns that were just overpowered. Like, you basically had the ACR, you had the MP7, the PP90. Don't lie, that gun could really be overpowered at times. And um, you know, some people would say that the MK14 was overpowered, but it was a single shot weapon, and you really did need a good amount of skill to use it. But, you know, I can understand where the one shot headshots could be annoying. I suppose you'd have to include maybe the Type 95. If you're going to include the Type 95, and include the M16 as well after the buff, because if anything, it got slightly better than the Type 95. Um, and definitely the before the Akimbo machine pistols were nerfed, the Akimbo FMG 9s were ridiculous. Oh, they're not too bad now. You don't, they are nowhere near as much of a problem now. But at the time, yeah, they were ridiculous. But the fact of the matter is, you had all these different guns, and also the fact that, you know, I could run around with the guns that would be considered good, but not necessarily overpowered, and I could still do well with them. You know, it wasn't that big of a deal. So, weapon balance was far from perfect in this game, but it wasn't uh, ridiculous like it was in, say, Modern Warfare 2, where you had Woman Iron Man Juice, which completely dominated everything. To be honest, I, I quite like this game. You know, which in a weird way, it was a deeply flawed game, admittedly, but I had a lot of time in my hands, so I had a lot of time to invest in getting good at this game. 
Uh, and that's due mostly to the fact that I had fourth year. So I ended up getting pretty good this game, and I became a pretty experienced, Call well, I'd say a, a good Call of Duty player by the end of this game. You know, I, was, I got decent in Black Ops, but I definitely got good in Modern Warfare 3. And also, I got much more confident in sniping. Like, I mean, at the end of Black Ops, I could go into a game and go positive, but I'd play quite defensively, and I wouldn't be as confident in my shot. Whereas, if this gameplay can say anything, is the fact that I play much more aggressively with a sniper rifle now, and I'm a lot more confident when I snipe. And it's not just a case of going positive anymore, you know. It's a case of being able to rack up kills, much like I do here. Now, granted, not always to the same extent as I do here. I mean, this is easily the best sniper gameplay I've ever gotten. But I, I've become much more confident in sniping and just in Call of Duty in general. Modern Warfare 3 had its problems, but I definitely got my money's worth out of the game. I ha it definitely had its fun parts, and uh, to be honest, I enjoyed this game. And I'm definitely going to be looking forward to Black Ops 2. And I'll probably go back and play this game every now and again, even if it's just for an hour. I don't think I'll be playing this game too much, to be honest. I think I'll be focusing mostly on Black Ops 2. Basically, just tell me what you thought of Modern Warfare 3, uh, whether you thought it was good or bad, whether it's good points outweighed its bad points or not. You know, tell me your opinion on that. But anyway, this has been Frozen Swipe. I hope you guys have enjoyed, and thank you very much for watching.